Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 6. We begin with breaking news tonight, a multi-car crash along I-94 in Fargo. Take a look at the traffic back up along the interstate. This is video from 45 minutes ago, the crash happening between 25th Street and the Walking Bridge. Early word was that there were several people injured. So let's take a look now at live video from our sky cam. And as you can see, traffic is again uh, flowing just fine. The area has been cleared up and cleaned up. As far as the details on the accident, we should have more details for you on valleynewslive.com and Valley News Live 10 at 10. I heard the lady saying, I've never been able to strip before and wave at cars as they're passing by. That's what made me come over because I was like, are you kidding me? A visitor to Fargo is upset after walking past a bar restaurant patio and getting quite a show. Shotgun Sally's hosted a fundraiser last night for Cat's Cradle. It was a burlesque show and was advertised as stripping under the stars. Valley News Team's Christine Stanwood talks to the concerned parent in an exclusive interview and uncovers whether Shotgun Sally's broke the law. It was odd, for, for sure. Ryan Olson was staying with his wife and four children at the Ramada. To his surprise, he heard a crowd yelling and cursing just down the road at Shotgun Sally's outdoor patio. A kid walking by would have heard some pretty nasty stuff. Here's what he saw and provided to us. I don't think a person should be able to walk down the road and through glass windows see strip shows. Olson says he was glad his kids didn't follow him to check out the noise. I know it was nine at night. There's probably chances are there's not kids walking by here, but I guarantee you there were some kids driving by. Ryan Beckman, the general manager of Shotgun Sally's, says that there was no nudity at the outdoor show. He adds, you can do burlesque as long as everything's covered. However, here's another video of the show obtained by Valley News Live. A spokesperson for Blue Bells Burlesque says that they weren't trying to offend anyone, adding that burlesque is more about humor and based on satire. If you have to be 18 to be, uh, buy pornography, you shouldn't be able to see it through a window. There was topless dancing going on. Beckman says that he did not get clearance from the city to put on the show and adds not one person has called the bar complaining about last night's performance. In Fargo, Christine Stanwood, Valley News Live. We did talk with Fargo Deputy Chief Joe Anderson. He told us they are looking into whether there was any stripping. Police are also working with the city to see if Shotgun Sally's violated a land development code relating to an adult entertainment and liquor license. We'll keep you posted. We found out about this after Olson posted the video on our Facebook page. You can follow the latest news, weather and breaking news updates anytime on your feed. Just search Valley News Live and you'll stay informed throughout the entire day. Really nice start to the weekend, but I hear there might be some rainfall tonight. Let's check in with Hutch. We are seeing some activity on the radar, mainly south of Fargo. As we take a look along Highway 9 in western Minnesota, Wilkin County, as well as southern Richland and Sargent County, some heavier showers where you see the yellow pixels on the radar screen. No thunder or lightning with this at this time. So passing showers possible this evening, but overnight we may have a chance of shower and thunder shower activity. Nothing severe as we dip into the 60s this evening and a light south breeze should be dry for most of our northern counties this evening. Coming up this weekend, a tale of rain, cool weather to be followed up by summer's return. Details in your hour by hour forecast in a couple of moments. All right, thanks Hutch. And remember you can stay up to date on the weather conditions where you are anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just download the Storm Team weather app to get the latest weather conditions and even follow the radar live. Search VNL Weather in the App Store. A man was found dead this morning at a Grand Forks hotel. It happened at the Hilton Garden Inn on UND's campus. The 26-year-old was taken to Altru Hospital by ambulance. He was pronounced dead there. The man has no ties to the university and was staying at the hotel. His name has not been released. Two women have been accused of stealing from the West Fargo Hockey Association. 41-year-old Amy Grieger and, of West Fargo and 38-year-old Leah Willison of Fargo were arrested for theft of property at the M&J Saloon in West Fargo. Police say the Hockey Association suspected employee theft from the bingo game at the M&J. Upwards of $10,000 is missing, and investigators found that the two were stealing money for an extended period of time. 
Thousands of dollars in personal items have been stolen in a wave of vehicle break-ins across the Northern Valley. There have been eight reports in Crookston alone, 180 reports in Grand Forks this month. One of the hot spots is downtown Grand Forks. Jessica Vogelweed says she, he ha she hasn't been a target yet, but she does know other victims. Actually, I've heard of a lot of people, actually, our daycare provider who lives right down the street. Um, she had her car, her van broken into, and then her husband had his truck broken into, stole a bunch of okay. um, just random stuff like her checkbook and a Sam's Club card. Okay. And In Fargo, police say the number of vehicle break-ins is running below average right now. One man is in jail after leading authorities on a high-speed chase and then trying to run away. The chase started around 6 last night south of Ogama, Minnesota. It ended in Detroit Lakes. Speeds reached nearly 120 miles per hour. Authorities were able to stop the vehicle using spike strips. That's when the driver took off running, only to be captured soon after. The man's name is William Liptak. He's from Illinois. He's facing felony charges for fleeing officers, along with a felony warrant out of Missouri. He's being held in the Becker County Jail. A 24-year-old man from Oslo, Minnesota, is facing several felony drug charges. Juan Gonzalez has been accused three times of selling 10 grams of cocaine in East Grand Forks. He also faces a charge of carrying a pistol without a permit. The drug carries, the drug charges carry a maximum sentence of 30 years in prison. This week's Valley's Most Wanted is Robert McKenna, Jr. He's wanted for breaking into a car and endangering by fire or explosive. Both are felonies. Call your local law enforcement agency if you have any information on McKenna's whereabouts. A Fargo City Commissioner says he's heard that FedEx will move its ground facility to Moorhead. This is after Fargo, FedEx, uh, Fargo gave FedEx a tax break to move its air facility to Fargo from Grand Forks. Commissioner Tony Gehrig said in a news release today that uh, it's another reason to rescind the incentives. Earlier, he opposed the incentive because it appeared that the company was going to move to Fargo with or without incentives. The tax incentives were worth $618,000 to FedEx. Great news for drivers in North Fargo. The intersection of North Broadway and 19th Avenue is open in both directions. Now, it's just in time for people in that area for the Bison home opener tomorrow and a Red Hawks homestand. All northbound drivers will shift to the east side of 42nd Street as contractors are finishing the final pieces of intersection improvements. On the north side of the intersection, traffic will be split, one lane in each direction, while crews work on the medians in the center. NDSU and the surrounding areas are geared up for tomorrow's big game, and they're keeping safety in mind. If an on-campus incident occurs, it's the jurisdiction of university police, but for matters involving tailgating or off-campus property, then it's in the hands of Fargo police. No matter if you're a new student or one with years under your belt, this weekend is one that all can look forward to. I think it might get a little more crazy, especially if the Bison do have a great season, you know, maybe by championship time. Championship time, you know, people will be partying, the whole town will be behind the team. Speaking of tailgating, remember that tailgating is allowed in all Fargo Dome parking lots, but you can only drink alcohol in lots E, F, and G. Now, those lots open five hours prior to kickoff, so for tomorrow's game, it's 1.30 in the afternoon. They close 30 minutes prior to kickoff. Are you hungry? Well, there's a new restaurant in the Fargo-Moorhead area. We're going to tell you a little bit about what's on the menu later on Valley News Live at 6. And if you are ready for some football, your tailgating forecast for tomorrow, passing showers and thunder showers with 60s for most of the early day, 70s peak temperatures and nighttime clearing. Your hour by hour details next. You're watching Valley News Live on TV, online and on the go. Always on, wherever you are, whenever you need to know, Valley News Live.